Hello again. We have a neat little five mover here. White to checkmate in five moves. The first thing to notice is that black is currently in stalemate. So the first task for white is to unstalemate him. The only way that white can do that is by moving this rook away from the third rank and give up the e-pawn. Or move the bishop either to here, here or here. Now what I can tell you is that ultimately we need to arrive at a situation in the main line where the rooks change positions with each other. In other words, this rook ends up on d2 and this rook ends up on b3. So there are clues there for you. Can you see the key move? Is it a move with the rook or with the bishop? Okay, well, let me put you out of your misery. It's not with the bishop, so therefore it must be with the rook. Can you see it? Like I say, it must move down here and be willing to give up this e-pawn. So therefore, what is the key move? Right, well the key move is rook on b to b2. The idea behind this is to fully support these pieces on the second rank. Now of course, this move, like I've said, will happen and it is forced. Black has nothing else. So what do we do now? How do we proceed with this? At this stage it caused me a few difficulties and then it hit me, not looking at the position on the board here, but looking at, at the still of the original problem. I'd had a good night's sleep so perhaps that helped as well. Can you see the next move? Well it's rook d3 check and now it becomes obvious why we played this rook to here so that it controls the second rank. Now, what does black have here? Well, he has two moves. We'll look at king e4 in a moment. Let's just check this out. It looks as though he might get away here, doesn't it? Well, he doesn't, because this, this is the trick move here, bishop f3, and this works wonderfully. And then it doesn't matter what black does. He has to go to the back rank, and then it's rook d1 checkmate. Now, that is a checkmate in four moves, so that is outside of our five moves, isn't it? It's not enough. So let's put this back at the original position and have a look at what happens when the king moves in the other direction. There we have the, the starting line up again. So the key move is rook on b to b2, king takes e3, Rook d3 check. Now, we agree that of the playable moves that black has, king f2 didn't work. So what about king to here? How does this work? Well, quite simply, after king e4, it's this. We double the rooks. Now, do you notice what I said at the beginning, how this rook, which was here, will end up here? which means that this one is going to go here. So can you see what is going to happen there? Okay, well, let's play king d4. What happens now? Well, the clue was there, rook d2 check. Now, should the king move this way, of course, that's checkmate in five moves. On the other hand, should the king go back to e4, that's right, bishop to f3 is checkmate in five moves. And there we have achieved our original objective, to get the rook that was on b3, which is this one on d2, and it's there, to get the rook which was on d2 on b3. And that is a really very interesting problem, isn't it? Trust you enjoyed it. Bye-bye for now.